Uh, well, we can start with that. Actually, pleasure to meet you and talk about Dog Phoenix. Mm, uh, I think the technology now helps, you know, create a vision like that, you know, mm. without giving too much away. How much does it help the visual effects to really create the feel of the comics now? Well, what's interesting is you can do anything with visual effects these mm. days. Um, and so anything that was in the com I think one of the reasons that comic movies are so successful in the last 15, 20 years is because the technology has caught up with yeah. the imagination of the comic book writers. Um, so there's absolutely nothing that can't be um, rendered by a visual mm. effect. Um, so, like in this movie, the X-Men go to space for the first time, mm. um, and obviously we didn't shoot that up in space, uh, so we managed to create something that felt real. The space shuttle felt real up there, um, a cosmic storm we could create mm. with visual effects. But for me, the, the other aspect side of that is I wanted this movie to feel really raw and real. Um, and it so, does. Thank you. And so a lot of the... Um, action sequences in this movie are real, where mm. you would use a visual effect, like there's a sequence, um, you know, between Magneto and Jean Grey where they're fighting over a helicopter. In any other movie, that helicopter would be a, a CG, a computer-generated helicopter. Mm. It, it, I wanted it to be real, and so we created two crane arms with a cable in between them that could, that could uh, hold a 4,000-pound helicopter with people jumping into it. Um, because I, I think the audience some part of our brains, as good as visual effects are, some part of our brains still recognize when something's real. <clears throat> yeah. The physics of it we realize, and the actors um, can play against something that's real, which is important. Um, so I think while the visual effects are extraordinary today and can do anything, I always find um, when I see something that's practical, in-camera, real, um, to be a little bit more um, arresting. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, talking about the story, what was most important for you revisiting, you know, the Dark Phoenix storyline mm. of the X-Men, which is so important to the fans themselves, you being so knowledgeable uh, about mm. the whole thing? Well, yeah, I mean, I grew up reading, you know, X-Men comics, and Dark Phoenix Saga was my favorite of the X-Men comics, like mm. for so many fans. It's the most beloved, it's the most iconic and enduring. Um, and when we worked on it, uh, and I worked on it as a writer on mm -hmm. X-Men The Last Stand, it really was the background story of that movie. We didn't explore the cosmic side of it. We didn't explore really the psychology, the complexity that Gene was going through. Um, second half of the movie, I think Fomko only has a few lines. Um, so I really always wanted the chance to tell the Dark Phoenix story properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I wrote Days of Future Past and, and, and sort of restarted um, the uh, timeline, it gave me an opportunity to revisit um, and uh, take uh, a, a shot at telling the story um, right. And so I wanted this to be as true to the essence of Chris Claremont's comic as humanly possible. I wanted to really focus on Gene as the protagonist of the movie, both mm. the hero and the villain of the film. I wanted to feel the emotional struggle that she was going through. Um, and you know that was really the goal going into the film. Uh, uh, I just interviewed Emily and she said something really interesting that the, the female empowerment themes are not cliché, they are, mm. you know, quite emotional but real. Uh, how important was that uh, for you and how present were they in the comics now that, you know, female characters are at the forefront in Hollywood? Well, you know, when you look at the old X-Men comics and I grew up reading them, one of the things that's <clears throat> remarkable about them is they have really strong female characters. Jean, Mystique, um, uh, Storm... Uh, Rogue, Kitty Pry, they have really, really strong female characters. And some of those characters have been, you know, portrayed on screen in these X-Men movies and, and portrayed with real strength, but they haven't mm. been at the forefront, the foreground of the movies. It's really been more focused on Magneto and Xavier yeah. and Wolverine. And so for me it was important, because the Dark Phoenix story has a female protagonist, it was important to me um, to, uh, to have other, it was an opportunity really, to have other strong female characters foregrounded in the movie um, as opposed to backgrounded. Uh, and I think, you know, we live at a time when luckily the world is beginning to shift um, toward being more progressive um, and uh, equal um, between men and women. And you're seeing it reflected in some of these movies. And I really wanted this movie to be a part of that. Yeah, it's true. And an interesting character, mm. uh, whereas female or male deserves their, their right place on the screen. For we, sure. We both agree on that. And, 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 and great actors, too. I mean, we're talking about Jessica Chastain, how she embodies a character that is kind of new to the, to, to the universe. She's kind of an amalgam of, yes. of, of several ones. Tell us about how this was constructed and written. Well, I mean, I, you know, the Dark Phoenix Saga has so much story to it. as the Hellfire Club. It has <clears throat> Lelander and the Shi'ar Empire. Mm. I really wanted to focus on Jean and Jean's struggle and the people around her um, dealing with her um, sort of uh, falling apart mm. and, it, and it breaking apart the family. So I didn't want to get too deep into um, the Shi'ar and the Lelandra story. 
I did want <clears throat> I did want to honor the original comic and and get into the cosmic and the yeah and the um, yin and the yang <clears throat> of her emotional say yeah. yeah and so Jessica's character instead of it being at Lalandra which would have meant meant I would have had to explore Lalandra's uh, relationship with Charles and that love story and a lot of other stories that kind of for me would have felt like they pulled away from Jean's Jean's struggle in the drama mm-hmm. of the film um, I made her. A combination of kind of mastermind, Lalandra, Emma Frost, a few different characters um, that Jessica, um, you know, because she's for me one of, if not the greatest actress we have, um, was able to pull off and do it with nuance um, and uh, complexity to it, even with not that many lines. She just has a sort of presence to her where you feel um, there there are a lot of layers. Yeah, and it's almost like it should be the reverse. Now there should be a comic <laughs> based uh, on, her, That's a great idea. on her film performance. That's a very <laughs> cool idea. Yeah, I love it. I love that idea. And finally, what are you hoping audiences take out of this? Because although it is the 12th installment of X-Men, I think mm. there's something quite unique about it. Thank you. Um, I, I hope they do feel like um, the family that they've come to love, whether it's one movie or all of the movies, um, you know, is challenged in a different way. And I hope what they feel is that there is a rawness and a realness and a humanity to this film that's a little different than the movies that, that, that they've experienced in the past from the X-Men, that the formality is gone and that this is a more real, um, relatable uh, set of characters than ever. And I hope what they, more than anything, I hope they leave the movie having felt something. I wanted to create a really emotional film Um, intensely emotional film. And so I hope they leave the movie feeling as though they got a great, you know, a piece of entertainment with spectacle and action and all that, but they they leave really feeling something in their hearts and, and maybe thinking about the people in their lives who were struggling with, um, you know, self-control, whether it be their temper or addiction or mental health issues or whatever it is, um, they, they think a little differently or with a little bit more sympathy or empathy for those people.